Okay, this is what you're gonna need. Flathead screwdriver, soldering iron, solder, 10 millimeter socket, some wire, good gauge, something thick, you don't want it to burn out. Needle nose pliers, male to female, connectors. I like heat shrinks, keep the water out. Oh, and if you didn't know the basics, first, there's gonna be this little cover in the trunk here. You're gonna take that off, there's a little plastic screw right here. You can use this, work it back. See, there's a clip here, you don't wanna break it. So you just pull it back, slide it right off. And then you got these two 10 millimeter bolts. You just grab it from right here, and you just wiggle it back and forth. You might wanna tape up your edges if you're not a very careful person, because you could scratch your paint here. But if you're really careful, you don't have to worry about it. Just put those bolts back in, slide this uh, back in, and it goes under this this lip here. This part goes under that lip, and you just screw it back in. This is the inside of the bulb tail light housing for an F32 BMW 2015 428i. You can see melted out there so the best I can figure it is it lines up somewhere on this large bracket which must be the ground so if you follow that all the way around here you'll see it's the framework for every one of the bulbs so probably is the ground and you'll see over here this raised tab so what you can do Get one of these female adapters, run you a ground wire through it. This is a heat shrink to it, and then connect it directly on to, to that. Either way. And to get a nice snug fit, you know, squeeze it tight with the pliers till it's not, you don't want it shaken. This is the inside of the bulb housing of a BMW 2015 F32. You can see here on the back, standard problem, prong melted out. So you can follow that to what you, I assume is the ground, it's trial and error here. See how this turns out. But looks like it comes to about this one, this big one in the center, which is the base plate followed around for everything, which would make me believe it's the ground. So heat shrink wrapped attached to a black ground cable. It doesn't have to be black, but whatever. Then you have your female adapter and there's a little metal piece coming out right here. Slide that female adapter onto it, tighten it up with some, some needle nose. Just get in there and squeeze it together at the base. Squeeze those tight. You don't want this thing to be shaking around. You want it to be firm. Maybe even drop a little solder on there. See the uh, harness side as well where it's melted out right there, which goes to the brown cable. So you detach the brown cable. Now you're gonna see on the back here you got this white cap. You just pull that off, run the wire through it. I loosened mine up so I cheated. Then you just run that black wire right through it. I just notched out and melted it out with a little solder and iron, a little notch out of the side, and a little one in the case under. Just just to make everything fit nice and snug so right there I notched out a tiny little thing to set the wire in bend it over and then right here to slide snugly over the wire but doing this all with one hand is not easy okay now that I've got the cable run through the back hooked up here soldered in I'm going to take a male to female adapter. You can see here a little fuzzy, sorry. Damn, 
thing doesn't want to focus. There we go. So this is your male, and you got your female. So what you're going to do is hook up your male end to this brown wire, your female end to the other end of the black wire. I'm going to cut this wire down. It's not going to be this long, but that way you just plug these two together and you should have power back to your signal. Okay, so it's soldered in. Lines run through this hole, out through the back of here, that's notched out to the female adapter. The brown wire has been pulled off, male adapter. Connect the female to the male. Well, you can put it back in your light first. Stick it back in. I really need a better way to to do this stuff. I know I'm not a big video guy. And you can see these are LED. I switched these out because they have a lower power draw and they're brighter and they last longer. So win, win, win. Okay, I already know it's working, but just so you can see, left signal is not working. And the brake lights are working. That's a $360 repair for free. One last moment of joy, you start up your car, no error messages, and when you hit your signals, nice and slow, but not super fast. Hit the brakes, no error messages. Voila.